Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well. So in this video, we'll discuss the third problem of lead code weekly contest 353. It's a medium level problem. Uh, the accuracy is very low, uh, but again, it's a trivial dynamic programming problem. Let's see what it is asking us to do. So longest non-decreasing subarray from two arrays. Okay. So you are given two zero indexed integer arrays, nums1 and nums2 of length n. Let's define another zero indexed integer array, nums3 of length n. Okay. Now for each index i in the range 0 to n minus 1, you can assign either nums of 1 of i or nums of 2 of i to nums of 3 of i. Okay. I'll tell you, don't worry if, you, if you're getting confused, right? So your task is to maximize the length of the longest non-decreasing subarray in nums 3 by choosing its values optimally. Return an integer representing the length of the longest non-decreasing subarray in nums of 3. What is a subarray? A subarray is a contiguous non-empty sequence of elements within the array, right? What does it say? So look, we have two arrays, nums1 and nums2. Obviously, both of them have equal length, right? Now, I have to construct a new array. Let's call it nums3. There, the values, the, the n values of nums3 will be equal to. So suppose if I consider 0th index, okay? So either you choose 0th value of nums1 or 0th value of nums2. You place one of the values here, whatever you want, okay? Similarly, consider first index. So consider the value present at this index in nums1 and in nums2. So out of these two values, place anything at nums, uh, the first index, getting it. So for ith index, consider the two values present at the ith index in nums1 and nums2, pick any of them and place it here. This is how you have to construct nums3. But you have to construct it optimally. Why optimally? Because whatever is the nums3 that we are constructing, we have to construct it such that the length of the longest non-decreasing subarray is maximized okay length of the longest non-decreasing subarray that means if you consider value x and the next value is y so it should be x should be less than equals to y getting it so that is non-decreasing subarray so if i consider this example so let's see what's the values 2 3 1 1 2 3 so let's construct n3 so i can either pick 2 or 1 for the first position so suppose i pick 1 for the next position, suppose I pick 2 and for the next position, suppose I pick 3, right? This is okay. Sorry, by mistake. It's 1. Sorry, it's 1. So for, for the last position, suppose I pick 1. So if I construct N3 like this, what's the maximum length of, uh, what's the longest non-decreasing subarray? So it's 1 comma 2. So that is why 2 is my answer. Similarly, if you come here, so 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4. Pick any two values. So among these two, suppose I pick one, right? I have I have choice, right? I can pick two as well. Suppose I pick two here, two here, two here, and one here. Getting it? So the length of the longest non-decreasing subarray will be three. But if I pick it optimally, then for this position I'll pick one. For this position I'll pick two. For this position I'll again pick two. And for this position I'll pick four. Now just see the length of the longest increasing or rather non-decreasing subarray is four. So my answer is four, right? That's why we are saying optimally a greedy approach will not be working here, right? Similarly, one, one, two, two, one, one, two, two, pick one here and you can pick one here as well. You can pick what you call it two, two, you can pick one, two, all the uh, approaches will work here except one that you pick two here and one here. So in that case, your answer will be one, but rather I can choose the array such that I get two as my answer, right? So that is what the problem is asking us to do. The number of elements that I can have in my array is 10 raised to the power 5. That means I cannot apply n square solution, right? I have to do something like a linear solution or a logarithmic solution, right? n log n, something like that. But n square will not work here. The, num the elements can be 10 raised to the power 9, right? So in the first look, it may look like a tough question, right? But if, if you are comfortable with little bit of dynamic programming, then this will be an easy thing, right? Why? Let me tell you, okay? Suppose you consider index number i, right? If you consider index number i, so there are two options. I can, there are two options out of those, I can place one number at the ith position. What are those two options? n1 of i and n2 of i. These are the two options. I'll pick any one of them and place at n3 of i, right? So why not explore both the options, right? Because greedily as we saw will not be getting the best of the answers right i have to check for all the possibilities right so here what we can do is 
if you if you consider it to be a one day array right i mean um, instead of two arrays if you had j just one array this problem would have been easy right but here i have two arrays so what i can do is just see i'm standing at the ith index right i'm standing at the ith index again let's consider that let's consider that i want to calculate what's the what's the maximum length of the sub array right what's the length of the maximum sub array which is basically ending here which is ending here remember it is a uh, typical dp problem right where uh, if, if you are comfortable with uh, calculating that what's the longest length of the longest increasing sub array or something like that right subsequence sub array right here it's sub array so this becomes easier right so here what we will do i'll calculate some answers right i'll calculate some values what are those values so for index number i the value will be equals to the longest sub array right which follows this property that means it is non decreasing and it is ending at i right it is ending at i so now what will happen suppose i have calculated the values right this is index number i this is index number j i have calculated the answers till j i have i have stored it somewhere how i have calculated that is another thing right suppose i have calculated it and I, now i want to calculate the answer for the ith value okay so now let's check what are the possibilities the possibilities are that i have two arrays n1 and n2 right so the possibilities are n1 of i is greater than or equals to n1 of i minus 1 right so if the current element if the ith element in n1 is greater than or equals to the jth element or, or rather just the i minus 1th element i minus 1th element in n1 that means yes i can form this possibility right i can have this possibility i can increase the size of my sub array by in including whatever was present till here plus one right plus one because uh, I, till here i've calculated my answer so suppose till here the elements were one two three and suppose this element is three so these two these two elements are forming a valid combination so whatever was the answer till here that means till here it was three i can just make it four three plus one four this is one of the possibilities right what's the next possible possibility n1 of i is greater than or equals to n2 of i minus 1 getting it that means the ith element in n1 is greater than or equals to i minus 1th element in n2 in that case what i'll do i have again calculated my answer right i have basically kept um, all these values suppose in a 2d array right in a 2d array so here also whatever is the length you got till here that means whatever is the length of the longest sub sub array which was ending here plus one getting it similarly i have two more possibilities n2 of i greater than or equals to n2 of i minus one and n2 of i is greater than or equals to n1 of i minus one these are the four possibilities out of these four possibilities what i'll calculate all of them and i'll obviously update my answer based on that right simple stuff if it was a subsequence just giving you an example if it was a subsequence i was bound to see all the values before i but since this is a sub array sub array includes contiguous elements so that means i am only concerned about ith element and i minus 1th element right simple stuff that is why i said since it's a sub array the problem becomes easier so let me show you the code it will become crystal clear this is the number of elements i have and this is the array dp array which i have taken to store the answers for every index right now why i have taken 2d array that's also a question right i have taken 2d array because look i have to what what are the values i need to keep just see here what are the values n1 of i minus 1 n2 of i minus 1 right these are the values i have to keep to calculate the answer for the ith position so that means these values will be different for n1 these values will be different for n2 right so that's why i have created a 2d array of dimension n into 2 right so the 0th i comma 0 right i comma 0 is basically representing the answers for n1 and i comma 1 is representing the answers for n2 simple stuff right simple so let's see now what i'm doing that is why i have taken a 2d array answer is equals to 1 i initialize my answer with 1 because a single element will always form a valid sub array right and also i fill all the values in my sub array equals to 1 because every element individually will be forming a valid sub array right now let's come to the core logic 
I'll be I'll be calculating my answer from i equals to one because for i equals to zero already the answer will be one, right? I equals to one, i less than n, i plus plus. Again, if nums one of i is greater than nums one of i minus one, that means considering the same area, right? If that is there, then dp of i comma zero equals to math dot max of dp of i comma zero one plus dp of i minus one zero. Okay, what does this mean? dp of i comma zero. This i is because I am calculating the answer for the ith index. Zero is because I am ca the current element that I am considering is from n one, nums one, right? That is why math dot max of obviously this is the same thing. One plus dp of i minus one zero. Why? Because I am considering this i minus one th element of which array n one only. When I consider it for n two, it this becomes one, right? As I told you, I have taken two array, two two d array, right? You can create two separate arrays, but that will also work, right? This is just for clarity, right? So whatever was the length of the largest sub array in non decreasing sub array till position i minus one, uh, what's whatever was the answer for that plus one, simple. Similarly, the next condition is if nums of one is greater than equals to nums of i minus one here, again dp of i comma zero because I am calculating the answer for ith position and zero because right now I am considering that my sub array will end with. A number of nums one, so that is why it is zero. For the rest two positions, it's one, right? I'll show you that. So math dot max or the same value dp of i comma zero one plus. Now I'm considering the previous element from nums two. So dp of i minus one, this is the position and nums two because it's one. Just see, here it was zero because it was from nums one. Here it is one because it's it's from nums two. Simple. What's the other condition? Other two condition. If I end the sub array with nums two, so nums two is greater than equals to nums one of i minus one. So again, dp of i because i th position one because the the sub array is ending uh, with a value from nums two, math dot max of the same value, one plus dp of i minus zero. So because the it's the previous element and from which nums one. Similarly here the previous element from nums two. Getting it. So these are the four things that you will calculate, and obviously you will be keep on updating your answer, right? Answer equals to math dot max of answer dp of i comma zero. Okay, it tells me that for the ith position, what's the maximum value I can get if I end my element, if the last element, if the current element that I put is from nums one, or if from nums two. Simple, a typical dp problem, right? So this is how you solve this problem. Um, I personally don't know why the accuracy is so low. Again, because maybe because of the problem statement. But yeah, this is how you solve this problem. Um, uh, not a very easy one, yes. But you use the trivial approaches to solve this problem, right? Uh, so yeah, that's it for this solution. Uh, I hope you learned something new from this video. Let me know in case you have any queries related to the solution. I'll revert on each one of them. Also, if you like this video, uh, if you if you learn something new from this video, then do support it by giving up a thumbs up, do subscribe to the channel as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.